The objective in this presentation is to look at how transfer operations affect the quality of molten steel. When we think of transfer operations, we are thinking of the linkages between various metallurgical reactors. The furnace, the ladle, the tundish and the mould. And in each of these reactors, the objective is to make sure that quality is either improved or at least retained. As we move from the furnace to the ladle, the tundish and the mould, these transfer operations can actually produce a deterioration in quality. And the challenge is to try to make sure that these transfer operations, rather than being a source of deterioration of quality, actually maintain quality. When we think of transfer operations, we're thinking of transfer from the ladle to the tundish, and from the tundish to the mould. And the challenge is to preserve quality rather than destroy quality. Now during these transfer operations, vortexes can form in each of these reactors. So for example, a vortex can form in the ladle, and that vortex, particularly as the level of steel in the ladle decreases, that vortex can draw ladle slag into the tundish. Similarly, in the tundish, it is possible for vortices to form, which can draw tundish slag or tundish flux into the mould. Even in the casting mould, vortexes can form because of the nature of the fluid flow and draw mould flux into the final product. When quality is lost in any one of these reactors, it is difficult to recover that lost quality. So, let's look first of all at filling the ladle. This slide shows a furnace tap stream transferring into the ladle. The stream can be widely variable. It can be a relatively compact stream, or in the next heat, it could be a wildly flaring stream. The problem with flaring streams is that copious quantities of air can be entrained into the steel, and this leads to erratic recovery of alloys. For example, if we were adding aluminum to the steel at this point, the recovery of aluminum in the steel product could vary wild, widely from anything from 30% to 70%, depending on how much air is entrained by the tap stream. This not only affects the quality of the steel, it can affect the cost, and it will affect the behaviour of the steel during casting, so that during the casting operation, if there is not sufficient deoxidizer present in the steel, then the process of casting can result in the generation of inferior steel. So this tapping operation is very important and control of the nature of the tapping stream. So this argues in favor of making sure that we have good tap hole maintenance and good quality streams from the furnace to the ladle. In this slide we are looking at the ladle stream entering the tundish. When this happens, one, if the ladle stream is an open stream, then one can obtain reoxidation of that steel stream and freshly made slag appears in the tundish. Now generally, to avoid reoxidation, we will use a submerged nozzle. However, during tra ladle transfer operations, when we change from one ladle to the other, then there can be a period of several seconds when there is an open ladle stream entering the tundish. The reoxidation products that are formed during that open stream pouring can actually affect 
the molten steel in the tundish for the next 10 minutes of casting so that the cast product emerging from the caster can be affected for as long as 10 minutes because of the nature of reoxidation that has occurred, has occurred over just a few seconds of open stream pouring. Here in this slide we see an example of a smooth stream and a rough stream during billet casting. During the casting of steel billets it is very often the case that refractory nozzles cannot be used to protect the steel stream because the casting mould is too small to accommodate the submerged entry nozzles. Under these circumstances we need to protect the stream using a gas shroud. Now the nature of the stream, whether it's smooth or rough, will influence the behaviour of the fluid flow in the casting mould. The actual character of the stream, whether it's rough or smooth, can change during the casting operation. It can be affected, for example, by conditions in the tundish. During a ladle change operation, conditions in the tundish can be calm and quiescent and we obtain a smooth stream exiting the tundish. On the other hand, when the ladle stream is on and conditions in the tundish are turbulent, then turbulent streams can be obtained entering the casting mould. The problem with change in stream character from smooth to rough is that the fluid flow pattern in the mould changes as well. So with a smooth stream, the fluid flow is deep down the centre of the mould and a flow back up the walls of the mould. Whereas with the rough stream, conditions are reverse. There is a fluid flow movement up the centre and down the walls. And this all affects the location of inclusions in the final product. So stream control and protection of streams between the tundish and the mould is very important. In order to prevent reoxidation, and here is an example of the kind of defect that is formed when we see reoxidation, we need to use either protective gases or submerged entry nozzles. This massive inclusion that we see in this slide consists of alumina manganese aluminate and manganese aluminosilicate and the size of this kind of defect could be 500 microns or even larger and can easily be seen on the final product without the aid of a microscope. In other words, reoxidation defects are massive defects that destroy quality in the final product. In order to prevent these defects forming and to reduce contamination from reoxidation, we can use either refractory submerged entry nozzles or we can use gas shrouding systems. Sometimes we can actually use a combination of both, the submerged entry nozzle as well as gas shrouding. The submerged entry nozzles showing here have exit ports, two exit ports at the bottom of the nozzle and the nozzle is closed at the end. Sometimes the submerged entry nozzle is a straight through nozzle, in other words, completely open at the end. Other no nozzles are closed at the end but have several ports, so called multi port nozzles. The various ports can be angled up or angled down, and all of this affects the fluid flow in the mould and therefore the location of the final inclusions. In conclusion, the Steelmakers challenge then is to prevent the formation of macro inclusions. These inclusions can be formed by steel contamination from the air atmosphere or by slag that is drawn by vortexing from one vessel to another or by refractory erosion. All of these sources, air, slag or refractories, result in the formation of macro-inclusions and the challenge 
is to prevent this kind of behaviour taking place.